I want to focus on this entire event on marketing, marketing that cash flows, marketing that cash flows. Now, the purpose of me going through this is to show you what marketing is not. Okay? And this is a big deal to understand. Tell me, what are some of the things that you are learning right now, hoping that it makes money? Offers. Offers. Okay, that will make you money. What's up? More marketing, definitely. Social media. Social media. Hmm. What else? Funnel building. Funnel building. Oh, we done. Okay. Oh, mass movement. Mass movements. All right. What's that? Story. Story. That definitely makes business plan. Yeah, no, not on the business plan. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and uh, let's dive on into this. Okay. Are you ready to learn some extremely powerful methods of creating cash with, uh, uh, <laughs> let, me, let me phrase this the right way. Are you ready to learn a method of getting people to do what you want them to do. <laughs> you gotta be careful how I say that, right? <laughs> when you know the things that I'm going to share with you, there is a massive potential to abuse it. And I certainly request that you do not, okay? The reason why what I teach works so well is because I am working with human psychology. It's not a trick. It's not a social media loophole. It's none of that stuff. I don't know how to do any of that stuff. I still don't know how to do a Facebook ad because it's not what causes cash, okay? This is a huge amount of power to influence others, and it's an awesome power, right? Please don't use it for bad. If you use it for good, you'll be an amazing human being who blesses lives, who teaches people and shares with them all the things that you know how to do that no one else is really quite amazing at, right? But there's also other people I've used, I've seen other people use what I'm gonna teach you to flat out sell, okay? How many of you have seen uh, or heard the phrase, um, if you believe in the product, then you know how to sell it? How many of you have heard that? That's true. But what I'm gonna teach you, I can sell it without believing in it, right? And it's because we're gonna deal with human behavior and how that ties in with marketing and actually creating cash, okay? Who here works hard? This is the first thing we have to dispel. Who here works hard? Keep your hand up if you're filthy wealthy. Ah, so you're saying working hard doesn't work. Ouch, spicy. Okay, can we all agree to have a little bit of thick skin here? I just wanna say it how it is for the more, okay, so that's good. Working hard doesn't work. I work hard, but it's not what puts the money in my pocket. Okay, when I was, I, I was a pool cleaning boy. I was a, a, a chemical pool deliverer. I built, uh, my first job was actually a discount tire. I was a tire buster. I worked so hard. We set national records on revenue brought in. I didn't see any of that, <laughs> right? I, I got crazy sick from that, okay? I, I, I've worked hard my whole life. Thanks to my parents, they taught me how to work hard, right? That's not actually what causes cash. And I need to separate that because that's what I'm gonna share with you. Now, when you work, Hard, or, uh, Deacon Graciosi takes, I think, seven weeks off a year just for fun on planned stuff. <laughs> and he makes a lot of money. It's because it's not about working hard. And like, that's not, that's not what actually, I work hard, but that's not what makes the money. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, I really want to separate that here so you know. Yeah, I keep your hand up. Okay. My expertise is in a discipline called direct response marketing. Um, who here has not heard of that? It's totally fine if not. Okay, a few of you guys. Okay, yeah. So my, my expertise is in a discipline, it's called direct response marketing. Um, and uh, it is, I, I'm gonna share these secrets with you over the course of this event. This is not like as of when the internet started. I spent a lot of time going 200 years ago to the old school dead marketers. And what were they doing before social media? What were they doing before the internet? What were they doing before distribution was so easy? How, no, that's what I'm gonna teach you and then we'll add the internet. And that's when the internet becomes super powerful, not a distraction, okay? We are recording this event. Um, I, do a, I do a three day event um, every six months. It's much smaller. Um, and <laughs> I'm required to record this to get certain chunks out of it for them. I have a, um, frankly, it's, it's one of the most expensive trainings. It's 25 grand for a course called Offer Lab. And Offer Lab, and people are like, well, good gracious, that's a lot of cash. 
Well, man, if I teach you how to make $250,000 in a year, are you willing to pay 10% of that? You know what I mean? Of course, right? It makes you a lot of cash for it. Um, anyway, I, I want to share with you guys my first biggest success with this. Uh, so again, we are recording this. I'll tell you guys how to get the recordings a little bit later as well. Okay. Um, my first big funnel success uh, happened, um, <laughs> uh, I was building a funnel for water filters. Um, I, I actually, um, I had been trying this game so much and so long. I finally was like, I, I, I'm, I keep building funnels for these brand new startups who haven't quite figured out their product or their offer or who they're selling or their message or their positioning. And then we go build a funnel and then they're like, the funnel didn't work, it's your fault. And I'm like, you don't have a business yet, <laughs> you know? So I finally was like, well, I, I, what are some criteria that I could think about that would cause success the, the fastest? I'm talking like the easiest, all the cards in my favor lay down. So I was like, okay, I wanna go for a business that sells a product that's at least $1,000, that already is in business, that has a, an existing customer list, and those are my criteria, those three things. And I handpicked all these people and I started reaching out to him and I said, I know you don't know what a funnel is and I do, you have no idea who I am. <laughs> if I was to build a funnel and it worked, would you talk, is it okay if we get paid? Is that all right if I get paid? But if not, don't worry about it, we don't pay me. And that's, that was actually my pitch and that's how I started building funnels for these guys. And what I did is I went and I did all this research and I did the ask campaigns and I went and created, um, put the funnel together, put all the research together. It took me probably four or five months. I was in the middle of school, married, kids, I was in the army, life was busy. Now I was doing it at like 2 a.m building this funnel and putting it out there. And I go and I put it in the funnel and we put it out there and we launch it. And uh, what happened? Actually, it exploded. <laughs> what was crazy, the first funnel, it exploded. And they're like, oh my gosh, right? I've had three companies say this to me now. On day one, you put all this stuff together and you put these campaigns together and you go launch it. And they're like, whoa, <laughs> like, oh my gosh, this is so much sales. And then they're like, this is so cool. And I'm like, yeah, what's up? Uh, I told you, uh, right? And then <laughs> it's validating for me because everything was failing for a while, right? Right, then day two, they call and they're like, whoa, it's a lot of sales. Wow, it's a lot of sales still. Like, holy cow. And then day three, they always call and they're like, turn it off, turn it off, turn it off. The first time that ever happened was here. And I called and they're like, Steve, turn off the funnel. And I was like, you psycho, who wants less sales? Click. And I hung up. And I did not answer for two weeks. <laughs> Shows you how juvenile I was. <laughs> I was like, who wants less sales, right? But <laughs> he called back two weeks later as the CEO, frustrated like crazy. Steven, turn off the funnel. And in my head, I was like, I don't even know how, but like, let me talk to him. Why would you want less sales? <laughs> right? like, I don't know how to turn off the funnel. And he goes, Stephen, you're going to bankrupt us. You're selling so fast. It's sucking all the cash out of the business. I am using that to go buy product. I can't pay my people. I was like, oh my gosh. It's happened three times now. How many of you guys want that problem, <laughs> right? <laughs> Way better of a problem, right? It happened three times now. It happened twice with Russell and once on my own before I started working for him. And this was one of them. And that was the first time in my life I ever realized that a funnel is not a business. A funnel is a revenue arm. That's it. This event is not about businesses, okay? I want to tell you what this event is not about, right? A funnel causes revenue. The business systems fulfills on that revenue. We're not talking about business systems in this event. I hire people for that to help me with that because that's not my expertise. My expertise is in building the funnel. My expertise is in actually collecting the cash. Does that, does that help? Okay, yep. I'm not gonna talk about business systems at all. Uh, I'm not your guy for that, okay? So first of all, what is a funnel? Okay, and we, we all know that a funnel, right, is a series of pages on the internet that brings and guides somebody through the sale. Right? Wrong. <laughs> that's not a funnel, okay? That's a method, okay? That's a method. Click funnels did not invent funnels, all right? A funnel is a sales message and an offer, okay? If you have sold anything to anyone at any price ever, even by accident, you had a funnel. Okay, a sales message and an offer. The fact we put it online is a method. And it's why when some people are like, well, I don't know if funnels will work for me. I was like, have you sold something ever? You had a funnel. 
It just wasn't built with intent, which is why it sucked, right? But you still had a funnel. When I was a door-to-door -door sales guy, I was the funnel. Message, offer, visa, or debit, right? <laughs> Credit or debit, right? I was the funnel. And when you look at it in that manner, it really simplifies the funnel game. This is the first funnel ever. <laughs> grunt, grunt, grunt. Okay. The first caveman to trade a piece of meat for a rock, that was the first funnel. It was a sales message and an offer. And I'm not trying to like belittle it or downplay it at all, but you need to understand like this is one of the biggest super secret powers of the game that I'm introducing you to here. Because funnels have existed forever. Does that help? Click funnels is a method of delivering it. Very powerful one. Automates like crazy, okay? What this event is about is the engine in every funnel. It's about the message and the offer, like I said. Now, why both? It's because they actually have to be created at the same time. That's one of the biggest mistakes I used to make. That's one of the reasons why I went through so many attempts. I was like, let's build a funnel, which I thought meant a bunch of pages in a row. And I was like, well, what should we put in the funnel? How about an offer? I was like, cool, well, I got the offer. And then I'd ask like months later, how do I sell it? <laughs> okay, you gotta create it at the same time. And that's what we're gonna walk through here in this event. Yeah, yeah? Good stuff already? We're not even started, baby. Woo! <laughs> All right. <laughs> this event is not about, actually, this is my college transcript. When I say I followed out of uh, college my first semester, I'm not joking. That's my first semester of college. F, 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 A in apartment leadership, which took me an hour online. <laughs> D plus and something else. <laughs> okay. Now I got kicked out of school and it's because I didn't know how to learn. Um, I, I, I spent the next four years learning how to learn and came back. And so I graduated from college super late in the game, <laughs> right? Compared to when everyone else does. And I ended with a 3.8 when I went back in and did the whole, it took me five years after that, but it took me a long time. And what, you don't go to school to learn how to make money. You go to school to learn how to learn, right? And I learned how to play the game. And once I realized it was a game, it got really easy to pull the levers, okay? So this event, though, is not about, I ended up getting a degree in uh, marketing with an emphasis in design and entrepreneurship and uh, did quite well. I had a lot of my teachers mentor me. A lot of them were CMOs of massive companies. And um, anyway, there, so it's really cool. They're some of my first early face-to-face -face mentors. And funny enough, this event has nothing to do with those things either, okay, <laughs> at all, okay. Um, uh, I want you to know that this event, again, it's not about what colleges teach, mainstream entrepreneurship. What are we told the marketing is today? Advertising, logos, logos brands. slogans, brands, business plans. I would write these 15 to 30 page business plans because that's what I was to learn in entrepreneurship classes, right? And we would, we would go pitch a real board of investors and some students would get invested and take them off and that's what they're doing right now. And uh, that's, that's actively what is taught in those spaces, okay? Well, this event is also not about, um, why is this event about money? Okay, so it's, it's, it's actually about money itself. Study money a lot, okay? Um, this is actually a pretty interesting graph. That is the year-by-year -year history of when taxes were introduced by the government. <laughs> okay, was it uh, uh, 17, I can't remember what, uh, 92. That's when taxes first became a thing. Um, taxes are not patriotic to pay. Um, so much so that those early people dumped all the uh, tea in the, the Boston Harbor, right? Paying taxes does not mean you're a patriot. Um, <laughs> I have some pretty strong opinions on this, um, okay, <laughs> which I will not apologize for at all, okay? <laughs> okay, do, do you think taxes are gonna go up or down in the next five years, right? Okay, look how much all those, we're getting taxed like crazy now, okay? Now check this out, that, that was straight from Wikipedia, I pulled it like two or three days ago, okay? This one here, uh, that is actually um, the minimum wage our minimum wage is actually going down. Now, I know a lot of us were trying to not be in that game, and most of us are, may not be yet. If you still are, that's okay. Welcome to the game. You'll find a home here, okay? But I, uh, the money, the amount of money we're getting paid is going down. The taxes are going up. This is an interesting graph uh, depicting, um, uh, oh, this is the cost of living. 
The cost of living has never increased its fastest in the last 10 years compared to any other time. It's increasing like crazy. So cost of living is going up. We're getting paid less. We're getting taxed like crazy. Um, also, uh, this is an interesting graph about inflation. Inflation is like going crazy too. So the money you are getting paid is actually worth way less. Ah. <laughs> Study money. But Stephen, money is evil. <laughs> Study money. I will tell you that one of the things I am so proud of, and I'm not throwing rocks at those people who may have needed to get them, but my wife and I decided, we made a decision to not get food stamps. When we were that poor, and I said, this is gonna be hard, babe, all right? But like, pressure creates great systems. So let me feel the burn, okay? And it was an active decision, and we decided to not take food stamps. And we had all these friends, and I'm not, I'm not throwing rocks at them, but we had a ton of friends that were like, well, if we can't get a job, it's okay, we'll just get food stamps. You, my wife was working for 350 an hour. It was a college town, so much supply, all right? Tons of students everywhere. 350 an hour that she was doing. And instead of studying how we can save money, I hate studying how to save money. Biggest waste of time on the planet. Take the same amount of effort and go put it into how to make money and suddenly that problem goes away. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So this is not about, I am not here to teach you how to save cash. I'm going to teach you how to spend it and collect it and bring it to you because there's some universal principles and laws around it that bring cash to you. Um, I, uh, <laughs> the whole get rich, give back thing, in my opinion, is a matter of survival. It's no longer a thing of like, well, that's cool. You have a little side hustle. I think this is a weird term. Side hustle. No, son, it's my front hustle. I do all of it there, right? What are you talking about? I'm going all in, both feet, ripping that cord, right? I'm going to go, and I'm, I, you know what's funny is we jump out, jump out of the parachute, or jump out of the plane, we build the parachute while we're following, and you know what's funny? The ground never really comes, okay? It's hard to actually hit rock bottom in America. There's so many freaking programs out there to save you. It's insane but we get coddled. Say, oh, we got food stamps. Don't worry, there's bankruptcy. Don't worry. It's hard to go to hit rock, actual real rock bottom in America. You kind of have to try. You know what I mean? There's so, I'm serious. You know what I mean? Like that, that's the thing is we get lulled into this security and we're like, oh, okay. And I'm trying to bring awareness to it. So when you see this, like, I want you to be capitalist pigs in the eyes of society, okay? We will create the most change than anything else, <laughs> okay? Please, please be very highly money motivated. Okay, um, again, my challenge, it's not for you to live below your means. I think that's really interesting advice. Increase your means. I was sitting down into this, uh, this meeting and someone was like, well, how can, we, how can we live below our means? And I was like, I'm not trying to. You know what I mean? Not the, I'm not saying be a reckless spender. I'm not that either. Okay, but I'm saying increase the means. Focus on the cash. And you'll realize, and I'm actually gonna tell you guys a little bit more about this. When I left ClickFunnels, one of the last things Russell said to me as I walked out, it was the last day, and I'm walking out, and he goes, you nervous? I said, yeah. And he goes, don't worry about it. Said, Dude, I don't have a product, I don't have a funnel, I don't have anything. <laughs> what are you talking about, man? And he goes, yes, you'll be fine. And I said, he said, what's your goal? I was like, a million bucks in the first year. And he, he smiled and he goes, it's not as hard as you think. He said, you'll be surprised at how easy it is. I was like, all right, bro, it's a million dollars. <laughs> what are you talking about, man? <laughs> all right. <laughs> you know, we, it hadn't been very long before that that we were like really struggling. <laughs> um, anyway, please focus on increasing the means. Okay, what this event is about is I want you to understand that money is always the byproduct of marketing. Money is always the byproduct of marketing. And we're gonna go through and actually talk about what marketing actually is. There's two worlds in marketing. And this is what I learned in school. I learned the old school, I mean, I learned the, uh, the really bad new world style of marketing. Okay? And I'm not gonna throw rocks at college. I'm not saying that. They're doing the best they can. I learned a lot from there. Wouldn't, I wouldn't be who I am without college. I'm thankful for it. Okay? But there's a general marketing world. And this is the marketing world that's like, they've got deep pockets. They got reckless spending habits. They're doing dumb ad things, right? They're all over the place. And then the other world is a world called direct marketing, which is what I do. Okay. And it doesn't take that long to get good at. Okay. Um, 
direct again general marketing is what I was learned what I taught from what I was taught from school um, a good uh, uh, illustration of what general marketing is is uh, uh, my dad my brothers and I we went over to um, um, a Suns game Arizona Suns game and uh, we were sitting down I remember I had this I had this epiphany in that arena <laughs> and we were sitting there and I was looking around and I'd been working for Russell for, for a little while by that time, and I was sitting around, I was looking at all the ads around the outside. You know what I mean? Like, and you chase, right? Wells Fargo. How do they track that? <laughs> they don't. That's general dumb marketing. When you walk through the airports, Zoom right now is touting around saying, we're so excited. We got our seventh round of funding. Seventh round? <laughs> Are you serious? And we're walking in the airport in DIA just two weeks ago, coming back from the event, and Russell's behind me and he goes, dude, oh my gosh, I got the greatest idea for our next marketing campaign. Okay, we're gonna take a huge banner. I don't know what he's talking about for a moment. We're gonna take a huge banner. We're gonna put click funnels right on it, nothing else, and then we're gonna hang it in an airport. And I looked up and I was like, oh, good idea. Let's go get some funding. <laughs> right? And, and, <laughs> That's stupid marketing. It's stupid. I could say the stupid word, right? <laughs> cool. <laughs> All right. That's dumb marketing. Okay. Real marketing, direct marketing measures results. It's the reason it works so well. It's the reason why I still only have, it's, I'm one of three employees in my business and I have 18 monthly contractors. Okay. And that's, that's how I run all my stuff. I have two funnel teams, I have two content teams and an admin team. It's quite the operation we have now. It's an actual business that runs my revenue. Right? I built the business underneath my funnel structures now. Okay? But I can track it all, and it's not freaky, and I don't have to go get funding like college taught because of direct marketing. Very different style of marketing. Most people don't know it. Most people won't know it. Okay? David Ogilvy was coined as one of the um, fathers of advertising. I mean, can you imagine having that title? <laughs> He's one of the fathers of advertising, um, and he was amazing a crazy ads tycoon guy, he, uh, he attributed his success to meticulous research on human behavior. All his success was based on that. Uh, about a week ago, I found a video. Okay, he, I mean, he, he died in 1999. I mean, he, was, he lived forever ago, right? And over 100 years ago, he was born, right? I found a video in like the 1950s, something like that, of him talking in our day. He just saw a computer. Would you like to see it? It's so cool. I had him go in and put subtitles on the bottom and clean up the sound because the audio was terrible. Um, but uh, we're gonna watch it real quick here, okay? <laughs> Super cool. So this is uh, David Ogilvy talking about our, our day and the two worlds of marketing. Now I did shrink it down from like seven minutes down to three, so you have the highlights here. But uh, let's watch this here real quick. In the advertising community today, there are two worlds. Your world of direct response advertising and that other world, the world of general advertising. These two worlds are on a collision course. You direct response people know what kind of advertising works and what doesn't work. You know to a dollar. The general advertising people don't know. You know that headlines and copy about the product and its benefits sell more than cute headlines and poetic copy. You know to a dollar. The general advertisers and their agencies know almost nothing for sure because they cannot measure the results of their advertising. In print advertising, they opine that short commercials sell more than long copy. You know they're wrong. They indulge in entertainment. You know they're wrong. You know to a dollar they don't. You inhabit a different world. The chasm between direct response advertising and general advertising is wide. On your side of the chasm, I see knowledge and reality. On the other side of the chasm, I see ignorance. You are the professionals. This must not go on. I predict that the practitioners of general advertising are going to start learning from your experience. They're going to start picking your brains. I see no reason why the direct response divisions of agencies should be separate from the main agencies. Some of you may remember when television people and agencies were kept separate. Wasn't that idiotic? I expect to see the direct response people become an integral part of all agencies. You have more to teach them 
than they have to teach you. Direct response was my first love, and later it became my secret weapon. Whenever I look at an advertisement in a magazine or a newspaper, I can tell at a glance whether the writer has had any direct response experience. Nobody should be allowed to create general advertising until he has served his apprenticeship in direct response. That experience will keep his feet on the ground for the rest of his life. You know, the trouble with many copywriters and general agencies is that they don't really think in terms of selling. They've never written direct response. They've never tasted blood. Until recently, direct response was the Cinderella of the advertising world. Then came the computer and the credit card, and direct marketing exploded. You guys are coming to your own. Your opportunities are colossal. Insist that all your people creative, media, account executives, that they're all trained in your direct response division and make it a rule in your agency that no copy is ever presented to clients before it has been vetted by a direct response expert. Ladies and gentlemen, I envy you. Your timing is perfect. You come into the direct response business at the right moment in history. You're onto a good thing. For 40 years, I've been a voice crying in the wilderness, trying to get my fellow advertising practitioners to take direct response seriously. Today, my first love is coming to its own. You face a golden future. Boom. <laughs> Cause I found it, I was on YouTube. I was like, what? Oh my gosh, why has no one seen this? We take it. We took it and chopped it down. And everything, but that is that cool yeah. to have him. I think it's 1950s, 60s, something like that. He made that video, and uh, he was he was making that, talking about our day. He had just seen the credit card and the computer, and uh, a little bit earlier in his career, and things exploded. And then he started seeing more of what we had the ability to create. And was like, holy cow! Look what you guys have. You know how hard it was for them to push their message once they had it out to people. I can do it in a button. How many of you guys Instagrams today, right? Boosh, right all over the place. And because of that, it actually sometimes has become a bit of a crutch. And we forget what actually causes direct response marketing skill sets. That's what this event is about. Yeah? yeah. Oh, baby. All right. So it's about actual direct marketing itself. Uh, direct response, or what I call real marketing, <laughs> um, measures advertising dollars. We study human behaviors, not design. Okay, we, uh, it actually teaches, um, it knows that awareness campaigns are stupid. That was one of the biggest things I was taught in college. They're like, how are you gonna bring awareness? What's your awareness campaign? Like, what? Why don't I do that while I'm selling it? Oh, let me bring you awareness while you're buying from me, right? Are you aware of your credit card coming out of your pocket, right? You know what I mean? Like, anyway, it believes in building a brand while you sell, not before. How are you gonna build the brand? Um, on the dollars that people are spending behind it, right? Way better. That's why it's worked so well. It believes in making a profit. Make a profit because you have money in your, how many of you guys have money in your pockets right now? Right? Anyone like dying to get rid of it somewhere? That it is kidding. <laughs> okay. But the only reason you have money in your pocket is because somewhere someone was a marketer. That's it. And if you're working for someone else, it's because someone in your company who you work for was a marketer. That's why for profit. Anyway, direct response. Direct marketing, real marketing, is the entrepreneur's marketing. There are different kinds, and this is the one that causes you actually have success. Okay, if you take what we teach about offers and funnels, but use old school, I'm not, sorry, use general advertising principles, the funnel fails. Okay, it's that big of a deal. It's one of the reasons people's funnels fail. It's not because the funnel wasn't good enough. It's not because the offer wasn't good enough. It's not because the message wasn't good enough. There's a whole other world before the funnel that fuels the funnel, that they have no idea about, and that's why I created OfferMind. Okay, so there's two worlds of entrepreneurship. The first world. Okay, I want to talk about something called the J curve. Who's heard of the J curve? <laughs> right, <laughs> terrible. Hate the J curve. J curve has killed more dreams, in my opinion, than anything else. Evil practice. <laughs> okay, okay. The first world of entrepreneurship is about funding. I love Shark Tank. 
but I hate what they do, <laughs> okay? Funding is terrible. There are six celebrations in the standard entrepreneurship world. And this is what I was taught in college and what I was being prepped for an MBA for. I really wanted to get an MBA for a while and this is what I was being taught and how to go do it. Not throwing rocks if you have a higher education. That's totally fine, okay? It's just not what causes cash, okay? The J curve is what I was taught though as a prep for an MBA. And the J curve, this is what they're gonna, this is what they teach, this is what they taught me. How many of you guys have seen the J curve like from schools? Yeah, how many of you guys have bought into the J curve and you got a loan? Totally get it, feel your pain, did the same ones, okay? Check this out. Number one, the first celebration is when you get funded. Woo! And they're like, eh, oh my gosh, did you get funded? Um, Colton and I won a business competition in, uh, at our college, that's where we met. Um, and then we went over, they sent us to win and, and compete in another business competition at another college. <laughs> and none of the other entrepreneurs took us seriously because we hadn't been funded yet. It's like, how much funding have you gotten with that? Like, let's not even talk about the idea, how you're gonna market it, what it solves, the problems you're gonna go for, this, you, know, this, you know what I mean? What? Well, it's, oh, it's not, so it's not viable because no one's funded it yet? Oh, okay. What are you talking about? The moment you get funded, huge celebration in the traditional entrepreneur world, okay? The moment you stop losing money. So I'm gonna take on a whole bunch of money and I'm gonna go dump it into my business systems. And the moment those systems start creating cash, this is from uh, Wikipedia, and you see the years at the bottom there. This is in three to five years, you're expected to no longer be uh, losing cash. Three to five years, I haven't been doing this that long. You understand? This is, n this is ludicrous. And this is, I, I have got, just so you know, like I'm very open about this on Sales Funnel Radio, right? I have had so many people on LinkedIn, the professionals, social media, slam me. <laughs> they are pissed that I am out here showing and exposing this. I've had VC firms reach out, like, what are you talking about? Oh, we don't know how to value your business because we don't know the loan to revenue uh, ratio. <laughs> My loan is zero. What are you talking about? Well, so you're not actually worth anything. Make two million dollars in a year and a half. What do you want from me? You know what I mean? That world doesn't know how to look at our world. And it's one of the things ClickFunnels has been running into because they didn't take on any money. Like, how do we value ClickFunnels? And they're like, look at what we've done. Uh, but there's no loan to revenue ratio. Uh, and they freak out, okay? The next celebration is when you start making money. You're not losing it anymore, but you're, you're not losing it. Uh, <laughs> you're not making it, but you're losing it as fast as you're making it. You're just kind of going straight, right? And then you then actually start making the cash. Then when you make more than you've borrowed, which is like supposed to be usually about five years in. Uh, that's a big celebration, holy cow. That's usually, actually it's back here. As soon as you start making more, um, actually it's right back here, <laughs> it's right back here. Usually that's when people go for a second round of funding. <sighs> okay, and then they'll go for another round of funding usually when they start making cash on the cash itself. The next is when they actually break even and make more money than they took on. Makes me wanna throw up a little bit. Um, <laughs> Then they actually hit a big profit zone. And the big profit zone is all that space above the bottom line there. And what you're taught is to sell out to the stock market in about 10 to 15 years, right? How many of you guys, you've heard this before, you've taught it somewhere else, this is what, yeah, okay, <laughs> quite a few of you, you're right? And this is, uh, this is the other dirty, dark side of the entrepreneurial space, <laughs> okay? <laughs> What's your real opinion, Stephen, okay? <laughs> The other way is to just build a funnel and bootstrap it. You know what's interesting? The people who compete with ClickFunnels don't sell their funnel software with a funnel. <laughs> Ridiculous, okay? Don't get funding. Instead, learn what real marketing is, okay? Create a sales message, create the offer, build a funnel, launch it, relaunch it. And I, I go through that and I share with it and people are like, that sounds like work. Or, <laughs> I had a buddy, I had a, I'm not gonna say any names. I had a buddy who was, who, he was like, how are you doing all the stuff you are? And I was like, well, I went and I read this book called Dotcom Secrets, totally changed my life. And uh, I was sitting on a, you know, sitting on a, he was in the army with me, he's a great guy, I love the guy. Um, but a few people in the army were like, how are you doing what you're doing? Before, after they stopped making fun of me. <laughs> I was sitting on a security line with an M16 in my right hand and dot-com secrets in my left hand for 10 days in the dirt. <laughs> and in army uniforms, there's a pen slot right here on the forearm. 
So I'd lay my rifle down, make sure no sergeants were around. Take out my pen, write it. It was a training, okay? There was nothing like going on. <laughs> but, uh, that's why I read Dot Com Secrets. And uh, he looked at, he, I, my buddy asked me, where, do you, where are you learning this? He said, go to dotcomsecrets.com. And he went there, he's like, ah, this guy looks like, he's talking a lot about money and like a lot about, this looks like a scam. I don't, I don't think so. I was like, what are you talking? Look at my bank statement. What are you talking? Just go. It's $7 though. Like, I don't, it's $7. What is wrong with you? Right? After a while, I just stopped pursuing him. I was like, all right, whatever. Okay. But this is, this is people like, sound, sounds like it's a lot of work. I'm like, what? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Anyone offended yet? Are we all good? All right. Sounds good. All right. So, school and mainstream entrepreneurship teaches us to build a business system. Who's on your team? How are you gonna fulfill, right? Where are you gonna source your product from? What's your operations statement? All that stuff. That's all you figure out. And then you're gonna write it up in a 15 to 30 page business plan and hopefully go get funded. And then hopefully those systems create cash. And that's what you're taught. Instead, do it the other way, <laughs> right? Don't go do the business systems things. What you do is uh, build the funnel and uh, test your message and offer real time, right? And then those things create your systems. That's why I've created my systems mostly in the last year compared to the first six months. I was just solo for the most part, right? I take that revenue and the revenue builds my team as I need it. My revenue builds my systems as I need them. I get paid from the profit, not a loan, right? Heal the J-Groove, subtle message there. <laughs> I was, uh, um, um, I backpacked quite a bit growing up. I took that picture standing on, uh, on the side of the Tetons. The Grand Teton is super fun. We got up at like 2.30 with headlamps and walked for like 17 hours and it's a fun climb. Anyone climb the Tetons or a backpacker? Nice, I love it and um, spent a lot of, time outdoors and such. And I remember in this particular uh, time outside, there was, uh, I, nothing was really working still. And I, I was learning the very things I just walked through with you though. It's like, why am I still broke? You've ever asked yourself that? <laughs> oh man, why am I still broke? And um, the biggest thing I was really asking is I was learning all these things and I wasn't taking any action. I mean, not real action, you know what I mean? Where's putting a little toe in there, like, no, I'm doing it. <laughs> no, okay. Yeah, I'm, yeah, it, it sucks, all right? You're throwing rocks at it because you're not quite totally two feet in yet. You know what I mean? And I was doing that. I was like, does this really work for me? I was stuck on internal beliefs. And what I was um, um, fighting with myself on was, was my scenario is different. <laughs> it, it doesn't work for me. My scenario is different. Anyone ever? said that to themselves? Liars, liars. <laughs> we all said it to ourselves. Guys, uh, first of all, I just want you to real quick, just raise your hand. Say this. 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 It's like 600 of you. This. This. Works. Works. For me. For me. So willingly, that's awesome. This works for you. What I'm gonna walk through works for you because it's based on human psychology. Claude Hopkins, one of the guys that invented like direct marketing also. He's like the first guy to measure ads. And it was this crazy, how would you measure the ad, right? Crazy. He said, human nature is perpetual. In most respects, it is the same today as in the time of Caesar. That's big. So the principles of psychology are fixed and enduring. And that's why what I teach works. It's not based on a flash in the pan thing. I still don't know how to run a Facebook ad, like I was saying. My, my business now is at a time where it does more things than I know how to do. Because I know my role. And that's what, we're, that's what I'm sharing with you guys here, okay? Will work? Yeah, absolutely. So again, again, this is not about flash in the pan tricks. Let's just recap real fast, because I know I walked through several things with that. This is not about, and I encourage you to never study, right? You don't need to study business systems. That mean, that's a hireable thing. So I do, okay? It's about a funnel. It's a sales message and offering campaigns. Okay, it's, about main, it's not about mainstream or wasteful or, or haphazard or dumb or other various, <laughs> anyway, it's not about General advertising about direct marketing. This is not about saving money. I want you to focus on learning how to make money and the levers that cause that. It's not about a current trick. I hate tricks. I don't study them. I don't teach them because they're a waste of time. It's about human behaviors. 
okay? It's not about funding, it's about easy bootstrapping. How many of you guys have a funnel that's working right now? That is awesome. That's so cool. Remember that first time you had that dollar come in? The first dollar. And in general, the first, yeah, how many of you guys remember that first dollar that you made? Was that not like vindication? You know, you're like, yeah, bring me to the top of a mountain. Let me roar, right? I was so stoked the first time I saw that. Holy crap. The first money I made online was with Ben, who's actually here as well. Uh, ben, uh, uh, when I tell the story about Paul Mitchell, when I did stuff for Paul Mitchell, uh, it's actually with Ben. It wouldn't have happened without Ben. Ben is the one that sold him. Um, Ben's here though. And uh, that first 50 bucks that came in, which we spent $50 on ads to acquire, <laughs> it was like huge though. It changed my life. 